Rallies across the country yesterday for both the yes and no campaign for the voice to parliament referendum. How much impact will it make? Joining me live in the studio is the founder of Small Business Women Australia, Amanda Rose. Morning. Morning. Will it make much of a difference, do you think, the rallies? It's, it's, it's good to see people uh, passionate about things, but will it make a difference? Not sure. I think rallies are more... For a lot of people, it's just giving them an avenue to express how they feel because they feel frustrated that no-one's listening to them. And it's great that we can do that in this country, but will it change the minds of people? I'm not sure. You know, usually Australians just make up their mind and just stay quiet and get on with their business. So maybe a few here and there, but probably not much. Had the opportunity yesterday to interview New South Wales Premier Chris Minns, who handed down his first budget, almost a six-month report card now. He's been in power for six months. It was a gutsy budget in the sense of lots of cuts... Lots of cuts. So um, there are, you know, pros and cons here. They cut a lot for small business and a lot of the initiatives that are out there. And I'm not into just guillotining, cutting those initiatives. I would like to see an audit with a lot of them to make sure there are KPIs and it works. However, I do like the fact that essential workers... Uh, did get a pay increase. So it was heavily on that side, you know, with affordable housing, but there needs to be more push or more investment into the small business community because really they're the, their taxes are the ones holding up the economy. Interesting, the whole tolls thing. Anyone outside of Sydney probably isn't as au okay. with it, but we are a very much toll-driven city. Um, and the Harbour Bridge toll going up yesterday. Lots of people on the northern beaches not too happy with that. Well, now they know what it's like being in Western Sydney. So sometimes in Western Sydney, you're paying for three tolls just to get to work or to see a client for a small business. Mm. And I always feel for the tradies. So I always feel that, you know, we should be analysing their tolls and, you know, the, the cap might be $60, but if a tradie is spending a lot more and need a lot more reimbursement, we should be looking into that. Not a lot of sympathy for those on the peninsula? No, not at all. OK. Now, <laughs> John... John, unless you want to go to the beach. Now, Josh Frydenberg moves up the ranks at Goldman Sachs. Does this mean he's gone forever? He's only early 50s. I wouldn't say gone forever. I would just say that he probably doesn't think that there's a chance for the next election. So you might see him kind of, you know, emerge for the one after. Mm, we don't know. Interesting. Mm. Be really he's interesting. very popular. Yeah, he's very popular. And, and he's a good example as and well. And I think he loves, loves the beat of Canberra as well. But he does. But he also it's a good example of someone who is qualified and knows what they're doing, builds good relationships, gets a job outside of politics because a lot of people that didn't do that while they're in politics and still can't get a job. Yeah, and I, I sit neither side, but I do like him. I really mm. do. Airbnb. Look, I'm, I've never been a fan of taxing Airbnbs. I think that if, you know, a lot of people um, have it, an investment property in their Airbnb because it actually helps them survive. It brings in that extra money. So to force a tax on them or to force to say, well, you've got um, space in your, you know, place for the week, you should rent it out. If that's what they're going to do, then why aren't they taxing hotels and why aren't they saying to hotels, well, why don't you give your um, room to a family that needs it? So I think it's, it's demonising and penalising people that are actually put in their hard-earned money and worked hard to find investment property. It's so important, isn't it, to allow people that are ambitious, uh, That's entrepreneurial. Right. That's right. And think about it. It's, it's taking the pressure off leaning on the government. And if you start taking away people's hope, if you say, well, we're going to just tax that and tax that and tax that, people won't bother trying anything. Mm. Then we'll have a, a nation of just hopelessness. And that's not what we want, especially for the next generation. You launch Small Business Women Australia. You keep the federal government... <laughs> On their toes? I do, I do. So they're actually changed the procurement. Um, there's a, a few procurement changes the federal mm. government's doing, which is good. It's, it's increasing, you know, small businesses have access for the um, contracts from 10 to 20%. However, from the female's perspective, we've put in a submission to say women weren't considered in this because there are more there are different barriers for women and we also need to increase the number of um, contracts for small business. And it says SMEs, and let's face it, a 20-person, you know, 20 employees versus 180 employees, very, very different. So we need to make sure that the small business woman has the ability to contract for government, um, you know, it could be infrastructure, catering, whatever it is, but have the ability to do so. How hard is it to get that voice? We see people in regional areas, we see small organisations, we see, you know, those suffering from rare diseases struggling to get a voice. How hard is it? 
It's very hard and there's a massive disconnect between state and federal government and what goes on in the everyday life of someone, whether it's small business, family run business or someone's got health issues. So I always say look and see what you can do to get a voice. So there are a lot of Senate inquiries, for example, that run. Go onto the Parliament website, look at the Senate inquiries. It isn't just for the elite or for the top business, it's actually for everyday people. Put in a submission, do a one pager, contact the government, contact us and say, how can we do this? And actually. Uh, get your voice heard. It's not as overwhelming as you think, but unless everyday people and everyday small businesses submit, like there's one right now for the closing the loopholes amendment with the fair work with independent contractors, if small businesses don't submit an inquiry into that put or put some submission into it, the government won't know. There won't be a discussion about it. So, you know, you've got to... Um, if you don't ask, you don't get. So we really need to push that. Yeah, and, and just finally, you need to be the squeaky or the squeaky wheel. Yes. But you also need to be a little bit creative. A lot of people may ask me over the course of time, how do I get some publicity on this thing? Was, I do something a little bit different. I, I, I remember <laughs> one of the, the rugby union, I think it may have been the Waratahs, they, they did a launch where they broke the world record for wearing rubber elephant heads. But they got all the publicity in the world because people thought, oh... That's but, an interesting story. But that also takes effort. So a lot of time they mm. don't have the time and effort. So this is when, it, you know, the whole divisiveness that mm. happens. And don't let that happen. So work with other small businesses, work with people in different industries, get together, join a community and say, what can we do to make a difference? And, you know, you've got 10, 20, 50, 100 people do a rally. People pay attention. Yeah, be a bit quirky, be a bit different. Absolutely. Be a bit creative. Yes. Good to see you. We'll do it again Both. next week. Yes. Uh,